applications you um, create these at and how do you decide what artists are involved? So in terms of the location, um, and this goes against some of the trends in the art world for art fairs. Mm -hmm. um, so we actually sometimes veer away from like sexier places to, to be. So for Miami, for instance. So we started the fair in Miami yeah. um, and we no longer do the fair in Miami just because it wasn't, having as many art sales and, and serious buyers as the rest of our locations. So okay. we started in Miami because there was 30 fairs in Miami and we, we saw an opportunity and it, and it seemed exciting to go there. Um, and it's always, you know, a very bustling fair. Artists are really excited to be a part of it, but we've focused on these other markets where the numbers make more sense. Um, there's, uh, you know, clear disposable income in those cities, uh, and there's already a trend of people buying art there. Mm -hmm. Um, so that has been how we're deciding on cities moving forward, um, is does this make sense for our artist clients? Um, that being said, artists ask us probably every month, even now, Hey, are you going to come back to Miami? Um, <laughs> Yeah, artists really want to be a part of Miami. I would not recommend that out there um, mm -hmm. uh, for artists. Just, yeah, if you're going to be there, it should be for, for you know, having the experience and really enjoying being a part of this, this big, exciting thing. But if you're there to, you know, make money and, and sell your art, it can happen. It mm -hmm. obviously does, but it's not as consistent as other markets out there. Um, in terms of what artists uh, exhibit in the fair, uh, so it's pretty democratic in that regard. So we have uh, open calls uh, that are all over the country. Um, and then we also have uh, a team. It's primarily myself and uh, we have one artist ambassador who are kind of in charge of um, researching and reaching out to artists. Mm -hmm. um, but basically before anyone uh, signs up for the fair, um, we, you know, jump on a call with them. Uh, we learn what their goals are, uh, and you know, if their goals line up with what we offer, um, then we find that it's a good fit. Besides that, obviously, you know, if the art is high quality and it fits what we're finding our audience buying. Um, but besides that, I mean, we're, we're really, um, you know, welcoming of, of all artists. It's, it's, uh, primarily emerging to mid career artists. So it's not so much, big name famous artists um that's mm -hmm. that's not our focus um but yeah so it's it's artists from all over the country all over the world um i would say that it's probably you know 75 percent from the us and then 25 percent from elsewhere yeah Ooh, interesting so would you be comfortable talking about the business model of Superfine? like particularly with the the fairs themselves how do like how does that work with the artists and and what's that relationship like yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's a few ways that art fairs function out there in terms of the business model. Um, and there are a couple other art fairs out there that are primarily for individual artists. Mm -hmm. um, what makes us unique is that it's just the, the booth fee. Um, so it's a, it's a flat booth fee for uh, whichever size booth you, you purchase. Um, and we don't take a commission. So okay. you know, other art fairs out there, um, they charge a booth fee and a commission. Um, ours is just the booth fee. Um, so, you know, some artists prefer one or, over the other. Having the split model means that the, the booth fee isn't as expensive up front. But if you are successful, then, you know, you uh, have to be paying more money. <laughs> um, and also with that, you, you're you not really in charge of everything. So the, you know, the fare um, when you're uh, paying them a commission, they're actually the ones who handle the transactions usually. Um, so you're having to wait for that money. You're having to wait to, um, uh, you know, kind of cash out, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, so that's that's sort of the back end um, is there's a booth fee involved uh, for the artist to participate. And uh, besides that, um, we do have um, the visitors of the fair. Uh, they, they pay to be there. 
we found that having paid tickets is the number one indicator of having a serious and qualified audience coming to the fair. Mm -hmm. um, and bring it back to Miami. Not, I don't know why I'm bringing up Miami so much, um, but I am. Um, it's, it's a good example. Um, so in Miami, especially during that week, um, everyone considers themselves a VIP. Um, so everyone expects free tickets. Um, they can get them from like some various museum in Miami or some organization. Mm -hmm. And then everyone kind of either shows up or doesn't because they have tickets to everything. Um, even just charging like a $10 ticket makes a world of difference. And uh, when someone is buying a ticket to Superfine, uh, we also ask them, you know, what is their, their mission, so to speak, of, of coming to visit the fair. Uh, and over 75% of people indicate uh, that the reason they're coming is to buy art for their home. Um, so, you know, that makes a huge difference. We have, um, you know, obviously not everyone is going to, to buy something, but uh, we have 20 to 30% of visitors buying a work of art while they're at the fair, which, you know, is, is a lot more than most fairs out there. Yeah, great. So with um, the groups you've been working with so far, are there any buyer trends that you've noticed that have happened because of, of COVID that have been different, let's say, than like before um, with like actual f physically being able to see the art versus buying it virtually? Or is it about the same? Yeah, I mean, there's, I would say that generally it's about the same. Um, there's a couple trends. So... For instance, there's um, this one uh, multimedia artist who uh, is in our New York fair. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, his art is really stunning and, and like, like incredible in, in person, but it's, it's kinetic, it's light based. Um, so having it online, uh, he had a bit of a struggle with. Um, but ultimately, he ended up having uh, an in person studio visit. Um, because of the e-fair and mm -hmm. and then he he had some great sales um <laughs> um besides that you know i think that you know when art translates easily online um i i think that that makes it easier to sell and and we've seen a lot of art that just looks great online selling right now mm -hmm. um if your art doesn't naturally look great online for whatever reason like if it's very textural and that's something that's so important to to you know how you're seeing it in person um videos and detail shots and shots at like different angles of the work are so important um so if if you're going to um uh if, if that's what your work is like and you're selling online the more the better and, and really people you know whether it's in person or online people really just want to to know what they are are buying um and like really having like a full grasp of it um before they make that purchase if it's if it's you know under if it's a couple hundred dollars or something like that then people are are more lax about that mm -hmm. um but generally if you're trying to sell something over a thousand dollars um people should people want to be able to really envision it um before buying that was one of the reasons, um, so with the virtual e-fairs that we've been hosting in the meantime, uh, we partnered with a company called Exhibit, uh, which is with two Bs. Um, and um, we, we've had uh, virtual gallery spaces um, as part of the e-fair as well, so people can uh, walk through those. And it gives you a sense of the scale of the work uh, in relation to um, one another. And that's something that has made a huge difference as well. Um, just in terms of people being able to envision it before making that purchase. So yeah. those are some trends I've noticed. So in, in the fairs you've done so far, particularly with, let's say, new artists, how much of their the artist's personal story do the buyers look into, you know, to to decide to make a purchase on somebody who they've not heard of before? This is a great question, uh, and it is uh, super important. So just about as many people um, who come to the fair who say they're, they're coming to buy art um, also say that their favorite aspect of our fairs is meeting the artists in person, learning about their story. Um, so that is like, that, that's such a huge reason that people are buying art nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the really exciting thing. If you're an individual artist, 
um, take advantage of that. You know, you, you know, your own story, obviously. Um, and, uh, that's something that, that only you can share. Um, and, and you should really take advantage of that, but absolutely it's super important and what, whatever that means for you. So, you know, a lot of artists ask, oh, should I talk about my process? Should I talk about the meaning behind the work? And, you know, what it, it can depend um, for, for different artists um, what their story means to them. Um, so some artists are really passionate about, you know, what media they're using. Um, and some artists are really, you know, passionate, you know, something happened in their life and that's what their work means to them. Um, whatever it is that makes you passionate about your art, that's going to be the thing that sounds most natural. And that's going to be the thing that excites someone else to, to buy your art. Like what, you know, they're, they're buying a piece of your life, your history, and, and you want to convey that. <laughs> so. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> so James, with, with everything that you have done and experienced in, in your own career, what would you say has been the best advice that you ever received? Ooh, um, so actually, um, I received some really wonderful advice from my neighbor, uh, back. So I, I, as I mentioned, I, I lived, uh, I, I've been here in New York, uh, for three years before that I was in Miami for two years while we were starting Superfine there. Uh, and before that I was in New York for another, uh, two years or so. Uh, and my neighbor at the time, he's this wonderful, uh, actually like, like pretty famous, he would call himself legendary, um, British photographer. Um, his name is Johnny Roja and he gave me some of the best advice that has stuck with me, um, to this day. So when I was trying to sell my art at the time, I, you know, I was creating a lot of art and I was, you know, just trying to get it out there however I could. I was doing a lot of different things. Um, and he told me that I should make my art feel precious. And that doesn't mean overly valued or anything like that. But, you know, if something is going to be small, you know, it should be small and, and really feel like it fits that size. If it's going to be huge, it, you know, it should be huge for a reason. Um, so, you know, those words, you know, just making it precious have really stuck with me. Um, and yeah, it's, it's it, I think there's a few ways to, to interpret that. Um, but I don't really think of it as, as this like pretentious thing. I think that, <laughs> um, and I might be paraphrasing a little bit. Um, but yes, the, the way that he explained it, um, was just very touching and it stuck with me. And so now every time that I'm, I'm looking at how can I make my art better? How can I make it more valuable for people? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, how can I make it just more special, more precious, um, and, and really, you know, stand out as something, uh, important and, and meaningful, uh, that someone's buying. So, yeah. yeah. Well, James, thank you so much for taking the time this morning. I really appreciate it. If the listeners would like to see more about your work, also what Superfine is up to, what's the best place they can go to do all of that? Yeah, so uh, my art is uh, www.jamesmillie.com or just at jamesmillie on Instagram. Uh, for those listening out there, my last name, Millie, is M-I-I-L-L-E. Don't ask. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's that. Um, and then for Superfine, uh, we are at Superfine Art Fair on Instagram. Uh, and then our website is www.superfine.world, as in the earth. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can find us there. Uh, if you want to shoot me an email directly, um, you can email me at james at superfine.world. Uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions that any artists have uh, just about their art career in general. I'm happy to jump on a call with them if they're curious about exhibiting in Superfine. Uh, and and uh, we can uh, chat about that. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that's how to, how to find us. Fantastic. I will put all of those links and your email in the show notes. So just in case people can click right through if they, if they didn't catch it all. But uh, this is a great, again, thank you so much, James. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. 
Thank you for listening to another episode.